Hello everyone, this is Kevin Alexander with AltaVista Technology. Whether or not you're a veteran or new to Business Central, a lot of time goes into querying data. I'm going to show you a few filter tricks so that you can get to the data that you want quickly. I'm going to start with a few of my favorite tricks with the chart of accounts. Let's take a look. So let's go into our chart. And when we're in here, it presents us the entire chart, right? And one of the things that might want to do is filter this down to maybe just uh, uh, income statement accounts. And so you can do that really quick. And we're going to do that uh, right here in the header. And we're going to come over to income and balance. And uh, I'm going to scroll down here to we find uh, in an income statement uh, account. So let's pick this guy here. And uh, up here at the top, uh, we'll select uh, the column header. And we're going to filter to this value. So now we've filtered for just income statement related accounts. Now, the other uh, trick here is that I may not want to see um, all these accounts, especially those with uh, no balance. So let's filter out uh, accounts that don't have a balance associated to them. We'll come over here to uh, our filter pane icon and uh, let's uh, filter totals here and uh, so over here in the filter pane let's filter uh, by balance and uh, we'll select balance and let's uh, select where not equal to and that's that greater than or less than less than greater than sign zero and we'll tab off of that now we have filtered uh, our income statement accounts down to just those with balance. Now, the other thing that you might note in here that's a little odd, it doesn't look quite right, is if we look at net change, uh, balance to date, uh, and balance, they're all the same. Uh, and it, the reason is we're not, we haven't applied a date filter here. So we can actually look at these counts for any point in time that, that we wish. So to do that, let's come over here and we're going to filter totals by and we're going to pick a date filter now uh, most of this data good data is back uh, in the spring of 20 so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to filter for the last day of March and the previous year and when we tab off here notice what happens now now we're seeing that change for uh, March balance of that date and what the current balance of that account is. So much more helpful information. And because I like this um, view uh, so much that I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to save this view. And I'm just going to save this as uh, income statement. I'm going to call it point in time. Now, every time I come in here, I'm going to have to update the date filter. But uh, here now, I can go ahead and save that. And so now I've got this uh, filtered uh, view of my chart of accounts. And so we just did three really quick things to get there. Now, uh, for the next uh, tip with filtering, I'm going to pivot over to uh, a customer's list. And so we'll select customers. And in this list, uh, we're, we're going to use uh, a tip that we just learned and just like on the chart of accounts we can come over here to the filter pane and if uh, I'd like I can go ahead now and we can filter by date so if I wanted to go filter uh, these particular account or these particular customers accounts for last year we'll go ahead and we'll just change the year here really quick uh, notice now what happened to the totals. So you can see with the lists, right? They're not just you know presenting you know list static information, but this is all very interactive. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set that back to uh, the 21st. And so the next uh, uh, piece here is let's uh, look at. Um, I may want to look for accounts that are blocked. So in other words, 
ones that we uh, either may not be able to ship or invoice at this time for uh, any particular reasons. So let's go back over here to the show filter pane. And <clears throat> we're uh, used to, uh, in the filters list here, we have these visible fields and we're seeing those uh, across here in our list. But if you notice, if we continue to scroll down, we have all the fields available to us in Business Central. And so one of those, as we scroll down, is going to be blocked. And in block, we can go ahead and select the value. So I'm interested in seeing a list of customers uh, that uh, we have on shipping hold currently. And so when I select that list, now my list of customers filters down to it. And if we'd like to, let's go ahead and filter here and we'll call this customers on shipping hold, right? Next time we won't have to go in and, and create that same list. Now let's go back to our uh, uh, list that shows us all customers. And so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll select all here and get the entire list back. Now, one of my favorite things that we can do is that we can actually filter for what we call um, token filters. So it's a word, right, that uh, instead of having to put in values, uh, you can use words uh, and it will uh, filter the list down. So uh, I may have a list of accounts or customers that I'd like to be able to uh, see their activity very quickly here. And let's go uh, back over here to um, our filter list. And uh, we're going to go ahead and select the customer number. And in here, I'm just going to use uh, percent, and we're going to call this, this is called my customers. So this is what a token list looks, uh, token filter looks like. And notice it filtered down to these three accounts. So how did it get to those three accounts? Let's, uh, for a minute, let's go back to our um, role center here and we'll take a look at that. So on my role center, if I scroll down, uh, I have a list down here called my customers and I can build this list uh, on, my, on my role center uh, of the customers that I'd like to be, uh, see here. And I just simply uh, select the Chevron here and I can go to manage list and I can add and subtract customers as I like. And in Business Central, one of our token filters is called My Customers. So now when I want to look at just those customers in the customer list, uh, all I need to do is uh, type in that token filter. So let's go back to customers one last time here. And you can see there's that list of three. And uh, it translated that right into those three accounts. And then if I'd like to, rather than having to go in all the time and um, uh, 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 apply the filter, we can save the list here again as well. So really um, a quick way to be able to uh, filter for uh, accounts that um, I would like to uh, see on my dashboard. So I'm going to use uh, items for my last example here. We'll pivot over to our items list. In the items list, uh, like a lot of data in Business Central, um, we need to check data for validity, right? Do, do we have all the fields filled in that um, that we that should be filled in for a particular record? And how do we check on those things? And so we can create lists to help us manage that. So the first is, hey, I want to look for, uh, I want to filter for blank data. And we're going to filter for any item number. Uh, let's see here. Let's use a vendor number that doesn't have a vendor uh, associated with it yet. So we can come back over here. We'll go to uh, our filter pane. And in our filter list, uh, we'll scroll down and we'll select vendor number. And the look for blanks, it's two, it's simply uh, uh, two apostrophes open, so not the quotes. And if I go ahead and tab off that now, now this filters down and shows me the items that do not have a vendor number associated to them. Uh, and so, so I don't have to create that filter again. We're going to call this items 
without vendor number. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now, uh, coming back to uh, our, our filter, let's go back and let's take a look at this point and let's look for items that might have partial values to them. So, or I want to look up a, a, a part of a value uh, and try to find those records. So we're going to use item descriptions for these. So these are pretty robust. And back here in filter again, let's go and look by description. And let's first look for um, you know everything that uh, might have conference in it. So I can uh, select the asterisk and we'll go ahead or let's say let's look for everything that doesn't have conference in it so uh, doesn't include right and here we'll do the asterisk and the conference and close and we'll we'll tab off of that now so when we tabbed off that now we have a list of all the products right uh, that don't include uh, conference in it. And maybe we can do two values here. So let's find, a, let's search for everything that doesn't have conference or the word chair in it. So uh, here we can build onto this and we just use the and symbol. And again, doesn't include. And uh, we will select chair or type in chair and tab off of that. So now I've got a filter, right? Really quickly, I've filtered my items list down to just those items that uh, are, don't have uh, conference or chair included with inside of the descriptions. So those are a few of my uh, favorite filtering tricks uh, for really, you know, dissecting all that data that we have coming at us every day. I hope you found this video useful. We'll see you again with another Business Central video. In the meantime, contact us if you'd like to learn more about Business Central. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up. And if it's your first time with us, click that subscribe button to stay current on all of our content. And as always, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.